Hey everybody, are you interested in rotoscoping but just don't know where to get started? Or maybe you don't even know what rotoscoping is. Well, don't worry. In this video, I'm going to tell you all about it. And then I'm going to show you how to uh, set up for rotoscoping in the free Pencil 2D software. So stay tuned for that. Alright, so what exactly is rotoscoping? Well, it can kind of be likened to uh, mocap that we use today. So basically in rotoscoping they would take some film footage and then an artist or animator would draw over every frame of that film footage, uh, in particular tracing a person's movement. That way you can get really realistic movement from reference. Uh, this is similar to motion capture which we use now in 3D where we capture an actor's performance using a bunch of markers and cameras and then translate that into uh, joint transformations inside of a, a program like Maya or Unreal Engine, something along those lines. So let's look at some of the movies that had rotoscoping in it. One of my favorites, because I'm a big Tolkien geek, um, is The Lord of the Rings. Not the new movie, but rather the old animation made back in 1978. And it was really cool because they rotoscoped all the characters in that movie, but you had like dwarves and elves and humans and a whole uh, cast of characters, and you can definitely tell that there's some rotoscoping going on there. Some other movies would be like a, a Skinner Darkly or An American Tale or a, ooh, Heavy Metal, which was another favorite old movie of mine. I'm constantly trying to push out these animated projects, and the tutorials are kind of a side product of that. Not that I don't love you guys, but my main focus here is getting my own animated projects out the door and onto YouTube for you to enjoy. So, in today's lesson I'm going to use some video footage that I created by using Adobe Animate. And what I did is I created a, a puppet of the cat that I'm using in this animated short I'm working on. And uh, I animated that in Adobe Animate using their new bone system. Now, I used to use Flash all the time back in the day, like Flash 8 or something, so all this was new to me. And uh, while the animation turned out pretty good, it has that definite like puppet look, like that South Park or, or uh, you know, even the new Simpsons are using some of this kind of stuff. And I like that. It's fine for what it is. If you want to just tell a story, then that's the way to go. But for me, I've already sort of set the bar with this first bit of animation where I have the cat reaching up and, and, and gobbling the cake out of the air. And I don't want to really want to break that and kind of switch styles, you know, partway through. So I'm going to go ahead and rotoscope that in Pencil 2D so I can add more of that hand drawn and some of that squash and stretch. Let's go ahead and jump into Pencil 2D and I'm going to just show you how to get started by importing an image sequence. Now. From what I understand, you can use a image sequence, like a JPEG sequence, or you can also use a GIF. So we're going to try both methods, uh, just to see if that works. Alright, here we go. Alright guys, so here we are in Pencil 2D. Uh, I'm going to start out by trying to import a GIF to use as uh, my reference for my rotoscope. Now before I finish up this video, I'm going to show you a tool that you can use to capture GIFs uh, from anywhere on the internet or anywhere on your local computer. Now my images are coming from an animation I did in Adobe Animate. I just exported a GIF and I exported an image sequence so that I can test out both methods to see what works and what doesn't. So let's get started here. The first thing is to select a bitmap layer. So I have this one down here selected. I can call this reference if I wanted to double click on it and rename it. All right, then I'm gonna go up here to the file menu. I'm gonna go to import and I'm gonna import an image. Now I'm gonna pick image because I'm about to try and use my GIF. So let's see if I find my cat intro GIF here. And then it always just checks here. Do you want to save? I'll say sure. Save it up. And it's going to think for a bit, so we'll just kind of pause while that happens. All right, it thought, and we're done. The image is imported into this reference layer here. And this is a GIF, and it just went ahead and broke it all up for me. And I should see here if I hit play. So the way this is going to work, actually, this is supposed to be part of a camera move as well. Camera moves up, 
there's this anticipation of the cat preparing to eat this cake and then the cat digs in shoves the cake in its mouth so if I'm looking at this one of the things I want to keep in mind is that there's a lot of frames in here and so when pencil goes to save it's going to uh, take a bit because it's you know holding on to all this information the other thing is if I look at number of frames I mean I'm up to 156 so that right now is saying that's 156 drawings I have to do and maybe I don't want to do that so in a little bit we'll just talk about some ways we might uh, get around this here all right so let's start a new scene and we'll try importing our uh, JPEG sequence so we can get a new scene up here in the file menu or we can just hit control N and I'm gonna throw that one away all right again selecting my bitmap later 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 I'm gonna select it right now thank you very much we're gonna import image sequence this time so that's file import image sequence all right here it is so you have to go ahead and select all the images and hit open here and then it's going to import an image every number of frames so this is pretty cool actually this is a better option because here I was just saying I had too many frames and I probably had more images than I really needed uh, I'm gonna want to control the in-betweens a little bit so I'm really just looking for like my my key frames and uh, you know that sort of thing so I could try this here we could say import an image every three frames um, and that might cut it up a little too much at the end but for the beginning that should be great so I'll just go ahead and say okay and yeah it wants me to save this again so I'll save it and we'll pause while it imports all right that was like 30 seconds not too bad maybe a little longer than the gif because it was doing some math to skip these frames let's go ahead and play this and see what it looks like and there you see that uh, choppy look that's going on because it's holding a frame or I'm sorry it's holding each image for three frames really slow oh you know what it's actually doing is it's slowing down the timing it's not bringing in less images it's just slowing down the timing so so that's what that option does let's just look at that again real quick so we're gonna go to file import image sequence and this option right here, import an image every number frame. So if you change that, and we look at this timeline, the timeline is just much longer now. Um, and it just imported an image every three frames. So it did not cut down the number of frames it brought in, it just spaced them out. Okay, great. So let's look at another option for uh, capturing our video footage that'll give us a little more control before we get into pencil. All right, so here I am inside of Adobe Animate CC, and this is where I made my my puppet animation. This is the first one I've done. I, like I said, I used Flash for years, and I used to kind of do this all by hand, um, just you know, using symbols and and the different transforms and keyframes on them. So this does make it simpler, uh, and you can get some neat effects. Like there's actually. Uh, you know the ability to animate your face inside of here and everything as well which is cool uh, but yeah I'm not here to talk about Adobe Animate I'm here to talk about rotoscoping and pencil 2d so uh, using this footage here I'm gonna try this uh, portable application called screen to gif and this has worked well for me in the past I'm a little frightened what's gonna happen since I'm screen capping but let's find out so here's our screen to gif and again, I'll put a link down below. So we're going to hit the recorder button. And what that's going to do is pop up this little screen here. That you can actually resize to fit around the area you want to capture. So we'll squeeze that over a little bit. I only really need this spot. There we go. All right. And then I'm just going to hit play on here. And I'm going to hit record on my screen to GIF. And now it's recording my footage. So you could do this from a YouTube video or anything else you want. All right, so screen to GIF. What's cool about this is it lines up all your images down here. So you can kind of like sort through them. 
and just figure out okay here's where I started that video and that was lame because I had too many frames it actually does a good job of kind of figuring it out too so I can get rid of some frames here and here's the thing with my animation for the most part I'm just going from A to B so there's kind of like the starting frame and then this hold frame up here where I build up the anticipation so I don't need a lot of these in betweens it's like I might put them in um, in pencil but I just don't really need them all right now and even like that blink it's just not terribly important to me because I can always put those in I'm gonna end up redoing the timing quite a bit you know so anyways I can come through here and I can just start tearing out some frames because I just don't need them um, and maybe I mean, by the end of it, I really just kind of want, you know, this frame that says, all right, he's at the, the max, and going back a good bit, you know, I'll catch like a middle frame or something. And this won't be as true, you know, depending on what it is you're rotoscoping. Uh, if it's like sword fighting or something, you know, you're not going to want to cut out a lot of frames at this stage. You're going to want all those in there. And then I'll probably keep most of these for the fast action, actually, because um, it's just a few frames. So there's the end frame, and then I ended up with some extras because of, uh, you know, it took me a second to hit stop. So now I've got something really manageable, right? I've got, you know, uh, like nine frames or something now. <laughs> so a lot of this is just going to be camera movement. But this action here, I really wanted to sell it, so rotoscoping was the way to go. So once you're done with this, you can just come up here to File, and then we're going to Save As. And this is going to give me an option of where I want to save it. So I'll call it Cake2 underscore, or yeah, underscore GIF, just so I can point it out real fast on my desktop, dot GIF. And then it's going to go ahead and do its encoding, process the images, and great shut this down hopefully it turned out all right so back here in pencil 2d selecting that bitmap layer going to file import image i'm gonna find my cat 02 gif open that up and voila there here we go Cool. So that's pretty much it. That's You've got your reference in place. You can take your reference from anywhere you want uh, and turn that into a GIF and import it into Pencil for rotoscoping. I just wanted to answer one other question that came up. It's a pretty simple thing, but how do you export out of Pencil 2D? So, easy enough. We go up here to File, Export, Movie. Now, you can do an image sequence or an image uh, and this is where you export your palette. I covered that in the uh, second part of that tutorial series. Well, we'll select movie here. And by default, Pencil is going to export as an MP4. Here you just determine where you want it to go. You can choose a camera. So if you had made down here below in the timeline, if you had made other camera layers, you could uh, choose which camera you were going to export. And then you get some options here for uh, what size you want your video to be. I mean, generally I'm doing 1080 by 720. Uh, I might start increasing that though once my, my camera tech matches. And then you can pick your start and end frame. Uh, generally it's going to set this up so that it just picks the last frame that you have a keyframe on. Or if you had sound in here, you can click this and say to the end of sound clips and it'll match up to that. Perfect. Once you're done, you just hit OK, and it's going to export an MP4 for you. And there we go. When it's done, it'll just ask you, do you want to open up your movie? I'll say yes. All right. There we go. There's my amazing movie. So here's the question. What if you want a different format other than MP4? Um, Unfortunately, it looks like Pencil only supports that. I might be mistaken. Perhaps you can add your own codecs or something uh, to the plugins folder of Pencil. 
Um, yeah, something I'm definitely going to look into. Or if any of you guys out there know, uh, just let me know. But let's say MP4 is what you have, but you want something else. Well, there's another fantastic tool for that, and it's called Handbrake. All right, so if you haven't noticed, I'm trying to stick to free software here. So this, again, is open source software. It's absolutely free. Uh, you can do batching, or you can open a single file here. So I'm just going to open a single file right now. And what this is is a transcoding software. So it just takes some video file that you feed it, and it makes a video file based off of the uh, settings that you specify here in the program. So I'm just going to grab one of these here, boom, and it's just going to load this up. And so what you can do now is uh, just browse to where you want to put your file. So over here we see this destination and a browse button here. And just hit that and that's just going to let you choose where to save your file. And this is cool. So you just got a ton of options in here and you can go through and explore all these options. But we can, uh, you know, package this up in an MP4 or uh, MKV uh, container. And we can go in here and get real specific, change the, the height and the width. Uh, we can put some filters on here, determine what kind of video compression we want to use, audio compression we want to use. You can actually add subtitles in here as you go. So there's just a ton of stuff you can do. And over here there's a bunch of presets. And you can actually come down to the bottom of this preset menu on the right and hit this plus or add button. And that'll let you make your own, and you can edit the defaults of that. So you can save up your favorites and then always load that uh, whenever you come in here to Handbrake. All right, everyone, that took a little bit longer than I thought. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this video off here. I will be back uh, shortly with another video where I'm just going to go ahead and rotoscope over this cat. And then I'll just head into a bit of speed drawing whilst I uh, fill in the in-betweens and polish everything up to make it a final shot. So thanks for joining me. If you enjoy this content, please hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate all you new subscribers showing up and I hope to see uh, you back again real soon.